Hi guys, in this video I want to go over 5 common Rails issues. Number 1 is the n plus 1 query problem. This occurs when your application makes multiple database queries to retrieve related records. This means that your application is going to be inefficient and going to have slow performance. The solution is to use the includes method to eager load associations. This is going to severely reduce the number of queries in your application. So instead of saying at post is equal to post.all, you can say at post is equal to post.includes comments.all. This is going to retrieve the posts associated with the comments and therefore make it a lot more efficient and save you money. Next is the mass assignment vulnerability. Although Rails has precautions against this, allowing users to set arbitrary attributes via mass assignment can lead to security issues, where unintended attributes can be modified. The solution is to use strong parameters to specify which parameters are allowed. For example, in a controller, notice how in def user params, we are actually inputting the params that the user is allowing. Number three, and these are the most common, and they are routing errors. These errors occur when a route is not found, often due to misconfiguration or typographical errors in root definitions. The solution is to ensure your routes are correctly defined in config slash roots.rb and make sure that the controller or view that are needed is are there and can named correctly. You can also run the rails roots command to list all routes and verify they are set up correctly. Number four is the asset pipeline issue. Problems related to asset pre-compilation such as missing or improperly linked CSS and JavaScript files. The solution is to make sure assets are correctly placed in app slash assets and also check you are referencing them correctly in your views. Make sure to run rails assets pre-compile before for deploying to ensure assets are pre-compiled. And number five and the last one is uninitialized constant errors. This occurs when Rails cannot find a class or a module, often due to incorrect naming or autoloading issues. So ensure the class or module is named correctly and follows the Rails naming conventions. For example, if you have a file called user.rb, the class should be defined as class user inherits from application record. If you encounter this error in development, you can restart your server to ensure that Rails reloads all files. By addressing these common issues with the provided solutions, you're going to improve the reliability and performance of your Rails applications. And that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.